move on to the body body fur head fur now. Um, a slightly different approach to this. So let's line up my pencils here. So we're going to actually start going in with um, some fur strokes on this now, just to start getting some of the direction. Now, let's turn the light. That's it. So I'm going to start with the light bronze, um, and I'm just going to start to. I need to flatten this paper out a bit, it's raising up a tiny bit. I just need to weight it down a little bit more. Let's weight it down there. So, I'm going to start going in with actual fur strokes up here. I'm not going to go in putting down anything underneath yet. We've got the um, So we've got the yellowish pastel map, um, the yellow undertone paper underneath. So we're gonna got that as a bit of a base anyway. But what I want to do is I want to come in here and just start to lay down fur strokes. It's quite unusual. I say normally with this, with um, working on pastel map or something, we'd be doing this quite late on. So just keep an eye on the length of your strokes, placement and direction. Also you've got you're gonna mix up this up with lots of colours as well. Um, this is literally just to get a bit of a foundation texture on the go. So short little stabbing strokes. in through here but there is a hint so we'll just carry it on through and we'll need to lift some of this away and texturize as well but when we first was putting this down it was with the intention see that's a big chunk of palish fur that's going to come around there but I need to get the dark in underneath before that is going to show up. Now I need my line drawing back for this. Let me just get my line drawing back as well. So the best way of doing this is to pull this up and take the other paper away for now. That's it, we've got our line drawing back. So we've got this chunk of fur that comes around here, just cuts in. That's a whisker just to give us an idea of where a whisker is. So we'll have to put, draw white on the back for that whisker to show up when we scrape um, scrape away with a knife later on. So I'm just going to come up here. And the fur here changes direction quite a bit. Try and keep it nice and random. We need the knife to cut in here as well to add the texture on the outside edge of that lip. So now we've got our guidelines in place. in place and then start to build really slowly well it'll work out really quickly we'll start to build our um, tonal values and that will just start to give form to everything Try 
get your pencil sharp as well. a tiny bit. I'm just line that up again. It's better. That's out of alignment down here now. What's going on? It's almost like my drafting film is stretched or something. an eye on things like that, that you've got everything in place. Um. I do love this colour, I know I've said it before, with light bronze, it's, it's just got almost that greenish hue to it, it's really nice. I need to use the knife over here again to flick up into that fur but we're just gonna do a bit of work with our pencils first of all Colour and tone, but we'll build more on the, the tone as we work. Now I can't remember here, actually asked how much. Yeah, we're going to need to lift off some of this chocolate. Um, I didn't like the lines that it formed over on the outside. And we were doing the main earlier. So I am going to erase those. In fact, I'm going to take them out now. So we need to come in. all of those lines. We can still see them from behind um, using our line drawing. Now I'm going to come in with chocolate and just define, come around here, there is actually a little tip of shape 
from the side there. So let's pop that in and then come back in here. It needs to be a little touch wider there. So we'll knock that back out again later. And we need to texturize, let's say, all of the side here. Need lots of ochre down through here. A little touch more of this. Light bronze up here. I think then we're going to switch over to one of our ochres. That's what have we got for this? Brown ochre. Or oh, we should get our oranges in first. Let's look at my sienna. Ochre. So I'm just trying out my pencils on the side again. Um, I think then that's the Persian orange. Persian orange I'm gonna come in with next. Really light touch I'm using here. Slide my yellow paper up behind just to see what it's looking like there. Okay. We need some more nice reddish tone in here and we need to take this dark darker as well. So it's kind of colour blocking. But we're just putting our strokes down. Rather than colouring in like we normally would where we keep the pencil on the paper. Lifting off. to break up, let's say, some of those dark chunks that we've got here. So the eraser and the knife are going to help to do that. But it's completely different texture in here that we're putting down compared to what we did on the main.
need some nice red down through here as well. So we're just going to build it up gradually. By adding, taking away, adding, taking away. Okay, so let's bring this down here a little bit more. I'm already thinking ahead, so you know what I'm going to lift off, how much I'm going to put down. What's down already that I need to take away? Put these shapes here, need cutting through, but I need to come into them with the red first as well. First of all, so the ruby earth. strong colour this as well so just be careful it's literally placement so at the moment so I'm not drawing a line Literally colouring in again, I'm just 
I'm looking, I'm not even looking at shapes, it's just I'm following around. I've got these guidelines. So I'm looking for those lines on the lion in the reference. I'm just coming in and adding colour everywhere that I see the colour in as correct a position as possible on my drawing to match the reference photo. as well, even on this paper, same as I do with pastel map, as I, as my um, pencil blunts on one side, I'm just turning it over and it's sharp, it's got a sharp angle on another tip then, so you can keep self sharpening as you work. And that just saves, well, saves you using quite as much pencil. Um, and you can keep working in a nice flow as well. just stops you having to sharpen quite as much. Also you get to a point where you do need a nice super sharp tip again. I'm just really conscious of this area here. I know we can lift off. building quite nicely in here already. Come in with each of these pencils again, obviously, as we will add, we'll lift away, and we'll need to go back in and add and lift away again. So I've gone over all that chocolate that we put down originally there, I've gone over most of it with this ruby earth.
flick over now to that brown ochre. We need lots more red up here, but we're going to build it up gradually. Need to get some of my little my dark flicks in here as well. Um, I need to super sharpen up the darks for that one. needs to go. Brown oak is not far off the same coloration as that light bronze. You just need to be careful that you don't get too much of both down in the same area and then you lose some of your detailing. Not worried about texture or anything at the moment still because I know that I'm coming in with a knife.
Okay, I'm going to come in with a yellow ochre. Need a touch of grey down there as well. Need much more peachy colours around here. I might put in the flashy colour that we um, used on the nose at the beginning. Oh, that might be just a little bit too. Right, let me raise them up. It's getting to the point where I need to take the um, line drawing away again from underneath. It's not quite clear what is showing through from the line drawing and what is now actual drawing. Get these last few markings in place. Need to get some of this wheat and champagne down on the reverse side as well. Just so that when um, we use the knife, we've got some of it showing through. pull it back with a knife but let's just get some in there anyway. orangey tunes to come in. Switch to that champagne.
dingy doom. Just looking for the ochre that I had earlier. Sienna. It's coming with a sienna. I've got Mars orange as well. Because we've already done the Persian orange. So let's work at the Mars orange. It's all about not panicking that you've put down too much pigment. And we need all our darks in here as well.
See the gradually starting to build up. Some contour um, and tone without really having to have worked too much detail wise. So I've got the Van Dyke brown now up here. Rub some of it in, but then I'm going to come in. I need to sharpen it up. Open up. And let's test these dim light fast now to see what kind of point they hold and for how long. So I'm kind of stippling here, but if you look close at the um, texture of the fur, you'll see how that is, is curling out towards you. Let me see if I can zoom in. If I zoom in, I'll just move the board up. There, you can see where I'm working there now. So if you look at the reference photo, you'll see... I need to come in here with the dark as well, even darker. I'm building up to it, I'm working light to dark. So it'll be up to the chocolate next. And we'll flick out with the knife into that dark, into that real dark shadow area there. And that'll texturise and then we can pull some of the chocolate in. Into the fur as well, so cutting back into it is what I usually do describe that as. zoomed in for you. Works. Okay, so the point's not too bad on this so far. Again, all around this edge, we need to use the knife. Okay, so where are we now? Okay, so
imagine this is going to have a knife for a little bit of texture, which is going to take it lighter. We have the chocolate coming in here to take it darker, enhance the red and the orange a little bit. Um, but at the moment, we're still aiming to get pigment all over so that the knife, remember, needs something to cut through. Otherwise, there's nothing for it to texturize. This needs some oranges in here. side here. So the same as we do with well, as I say normal pencil work, you know we mix and blend still. We're still layering our colours is just you don't get a huge amount of layers. Um, the darks will show on top of the lights to a degree, but once it's too much pigment down, that's when you need to lift off again. This area here I need to then mix in some, we'll, we'll pop the yellow paper behind as that, so we need to mix in some yellow, some orange, a few little darks in there as well. Lots of darks needed down through here. Super sharp. needs to darken up in here.
I'll zoom the camera out again in a minute, but you're getting an idea there of that zoomed in. How I'm working. lots of this nose area so stippling ish sort of just so I need like I said I keep repeating it I know but we need to get the pigment down to be able to lift it off with the knife um, again, I need to rub the back of the paper with the champagne to mix some wheat into this area as well. Turn my pencil all the time just to keep sharpening the pencil. needs to be more yellowy up here, so more of the yellow ochre being over the top. Now let's get some of this up around here. You just see it's all starting to sort of blend and merge now. But again, I'm not focusing on this being a lion still, I'm just Hunting out those colours and popping them in where I see them. Still need to build the tonal value loads. Still need to texturise loads, but it's starting to build nicely. And I can't wait to come in with a knife. But we're a long ways off doing that. I mean, you could, if you wanted to work an area, texturise it, move on to the next area, absolutely fine, just so you get a feel for it again. Um, in fact, it's not a bad thing to do. At least then you know how to carry on with the rest.
I'll simply show you the way that I'm doing it. You don't have to follow it exactly. You can if you like, of course. But, as, as well, I can't see that you can follow me pencil stroke by stroke, pencil stroke. But if you watch a little bit and then go, okay, I'll just go and do that little bit on that little area and then come back and watch another little bit. Gradually, your piece should be coming together. Lots more orange down in places. Okay, so now to just come up now to the chocolate. So to sharpen that chocolate a tiny bit. So yeah, considering these are uh, oil pencils, well, all pencils have got wax and oil in, but considering these are being branded as um, Derwent's oil, rival pretty much to Polychromos. I'm not using them, so I think when I try them out on Pastel Matte, that'll be the tester. Um, so I'm just focusing there um, as to how well they hold the point. At the moment, they feel slightly softer than my polychromos, so I'm being even more gentle with them. It won't be until we're layering lots on um, pastel mat that I'll be able to do a true comparison because obviously I know well how polychromos work on pastel mat, how they feel, how they mix, how they blend, how they stand up to be using a heavier pressure application on here these are working beautifully and that's how I just I do love the colours Need a lovely area of orange in here.
So I'm dragging some of this in already, but then we'll flick out with the knife. And then drag in again. This needs a lot more orange down around here. Where we put those little marks in with the um, brown ochre earlier. Just gone in there and I've just made them a touch darker with the chocolate. To strengthen up the reddish orange over the tone over the top. Keep an eye on this fur direction here though. Okay, so I'm going to grab the yellow ochre, pop in some of that just up through here before we do the knife work. in place before I use the knife and then we should have less to pop back in afterwards. zoom in just to do the knife work. Now I might have to just balance my board to lift it up so it's in view. Okay. Now I need my reference photo to hand as well. So I'm going to slide again. here, a reference photo up under there, and then I'm going to move the whole thing down so that it's in view for you guys to see what I'm doing. That should work. Good. Oh, actually, should I see if I can turn it? I'm going to turn the whole thing then. <laughs> it's better. Okay. 
So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. There. So I need to make sure you'll see in this. I need to just start to lift away. check on a reverse if I filled in all that dark area with chocolate on the reverse because if so then I need to lift a little bit bit of it back out again. Um, trying to hold this pen cutter away so that you can see what I'm doing. Well, unlike on the main, there's not a huge amount of pigment here. To lift off, so there's not as much um, pigment falling there. No. I just need to slide my reference photo out because I just want to see this here. darker in here. It's fine. We'll do that on the next pass. So texturizing in here. We don't want any obvious lines. So we're just taking out little chunks of fur. And I might come in, let's say, with the mono eraser as well. Come in over the top of this with that yellow ochre. Oh, actually, we'll pop the um, the yellow paper behind first and see how much we need to adjust.
these in there. I'm just going to grab the chocolate. Just pulling around some of those flicks. So I just need to check the other side of the paper and lift some of um, that pigment away if we have indeed added too much shadow in behind here. On the reverse side. to that chocolate with the yellow ochre as well So just little wiggles with the 
blade and that just forms that little soft clumpy feel of that fur as it just turns the corner there this needs to soften up in here with some more yellow Starting to work really nicely, this little area here. Let me just take away the white paper and pop the yellow paper up underneath. There you go. So that's working nicely there. We will need to go in with um, champagne or the, the wheat into some of these gaps here and also behind as well just to really brighten up some of this from behind. Just flip that over now and do that as I think of it. Sleep Lion, Dundee Lion. Um, I think, to be honest, we're going to leave him there for now. I'll come back and work on him. I'm not going to be able to finish him today, so I don't want to get to a point where I've got to stop. Um, and it's quite crucial that I need to carry on in one session, so I'm going to stop it there and then come back tomorrow and hopefully I might get him finished, um, but we'll see. Okay, so I hope you're enjoying it so far, and tune in for the next spot. What I'm just doing now, before I go any further, just flips the drawing over. Um, so I'll come in and add a touch of wheat, just on the reverse side of um, both of the eyes just a couple of areas that I want a little bit brighter don't want them too yellow um, okay same here, I want a little touch of this on a couple of these areas still working in reverse on my photo, I should have Flip my reference photo and printed it out. That's a lesson for me for next time, anyway. Um, okay, that should help a little bit. It's not going to help a huge amount, but it will just. aid the um, vibrancy of that light area underneath the eye there. So if it sits on the yellow backing paper at the end then it's going to have more of a vibrancy. Same as down through here now, I just want to add a touch of this 
light colour on the reverse. It's really hard to see this going down. I to lean to the other, lean to the right to try and see it going down there, but I can see it. Okay, I don't want to take it too far over. And I'm going to bring some white in down here as well. In the reverse. So again, work in the reverse. It's something really you need to do as you go along. Um, as you get to an area, don't just think, oh, that's dark on the reverse side. And right from the outset and go in and mark it as dark there. Try and just wait until you get to an area because uh, I'm going to flip this over like I said I'll be working on this area next but as I started working on this area I realised it needed to be lighter on the other side so that's the point I'm going to do it otherwise again you can't really see this on the other side and you'll forget so I want to do okay I'm in reverse let's come over here <laughs> so I want to get some of this wheat down on Outside edge going up there. And we're going to bring some white or the Arctic in. So up through here. And I'll just take away any of that yellowiness as well from that backing paper over in these areas I haven't done the whole area, I've done like almost stripes going up through there now let's grab the white, Arctic rather. Let's get some of this. Just see how much that kind of shows through. Yeah, it's quite nice to be coming through there. In fact, I'm just going to use a touch of it up here. Might mix still a tiny bit. Just strengthen that highlight. Okay, so. This side we want it. that area is only going to go down where I haven't put down wheat. Across the top of the nose I'm going to just use it to brighten that area. I've just highlighted a little bit over that nose area there. So let's flip this over. So, let's put my hand behind there. You can sort of see that there's some highlight area behind there now. Um, even over the yellow, it's not sure the yellow's 
taking over still, but it will have given us a little bit of um, a boost behind there. It will block some of that yellow coming through. See, the other thing you can do if you really want to take it one more level is either put another layer of um, pa I was going to say pastel matte line drafting film behind this one, put your line drawing underneath. Um, and just use white in that area that you want it again and use that to again create another blocking layer before the yellow underpainting um, or you could even go in on the pastel mat itself let me just I'm just gonna don't know if this will show up all I'm doing is just adding a little touch of yeah, you can just see it. Basically all I did was just added a little touch of pen um, pencil onto the pastel mat and then hold this over it and again that will block the yellow a little bit more as well. So you could even put the line drawing onto the pastel mat, colour in your brightest and darkest sections on there as well um, and that will again create even more depth and um, detail. for your highlights and your darks. So we are going to get going again with our pencil layers on the front. So I'll bring this up again. There we go. It's got a real thing of curling. It's because this came on a roll. Um, And therefore it just still tends to curl because there's nothing holding the corners down. You can get something called photo corners which are really good to use um, for attaching your drafting film at the end ready for mounting and framing. But because we're still flipping the piece up and down and around at the moment I don't want to fix it into place. So say so working with it on this board using little magnets is perfect at the moment. So let's carry on from where we were. So I'm coming back to this again now. I took a break overnight and I'm coming back to it now on another day. So I'm just going to sharpen up a few of these pencils that we've been using and some that we're going to use. And I'm just going to carry on working down over that forehead, um, just building the depth. I know that we worked all of this area last time. I'm coming back to it now. Do you know what? I think I need to add a touch of white even behind there. I think I added cream, like one of the creamy colours. I think we could do going in there and adding some white as well. And I'm just looking at my ones here and they're sharpening up most of them okay but I can just see some of them are just sharpening a little bit off centre. But that one there, that one Sharpening a little bit off. Some of them are nicely rounded. So there's a couple of them that are really off. So we'll see how they go as we progress down, down the length of the pencil. Right, so what colour are we going to go in with? Let's come in with... I want to darken up here this area a little bit. So let's get the Van Dyke brown. I bet it's not one I've got in my hand. Pan my Van Dyke brown. So I'm going to come up the top here. Just start to strengthen up this area. I think we need to put a little bit of dark down behind this area as well. In fact, let me lift my reference photo up so I've got it a little bit closer to where we're working. She says. Slot it down behind. Go with me a second. It's always good to have your reference photo slotted in if you can. Um, I 
because that way your eyes, if your eyes have got less distance to flick backwards and forwards to, is less tiring on the eyes and your memory holds on to what you're seeing a little bit longer as well. So that is in place. It looks like it's got a little bit higher now for the camera. There we go. Right, so I've got the reference photo is literally just above here now. So I can just flick my eyes. I can't see anything apart from that that strip there. That's all I can see on my reference photo. I can't see below that. So there's nothing going to distract me now. I can just work around this area, just focusing on that little bit. And to be honest, I'm quite tired today. My eyes are tired. I'm tired. I'm coming to this quite late in the afternoon, and normally I draw in the mornings. Um, so even though this is a small piece, it's a little bit overwhelming for me today. But I know I need to get, if I just get an hour done on it today, that's going to help me for tomorrow. Um, and I might surprise myself, and I sometimes do this, I might start getting into it and do a couple of hours on here. Um, I'm really enjoying working on it, but it's just, as like I say, I'm tired, I don't want to make mistakes, I don't want to mess up. Um, so I'm just going to give myself little chunks to do. And you can do this as well, if, if a piece is overwhelming you, a big piece is overwhelming you, um, break it down. So I am, got no idea what I'm drawing now, I'm just drawing this strip of Again, shapes and shadows and colours, but I can't tell what it is at the moment. I mean, I know in my head it's a lion, <laughs> but... I took that pressure off myself, but I'm not actually drawing the whole line at the moment, I'm just working my way across this top section. the same if you've got you know, a bit of pressure and you're tired as well, tired eyes. If you, if you really are under pressure to finish something in a certain time and you haven't got time to keep walking away, which is the best option, walk away. That's why I've been doing this over a few shorter stints because I'm coming up to having a week off. It's my first week off in a year. I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm, I really want to push to get this done for everyone over on Patreon before I take that downtime. I just really hope that I get that. So the pressure's on. But it's only the pressure I'm really putting on myself. Okay, so let's darken that up. I'm going to go in with a touch of the Mars Black just to enhance a little bit more. So we're going to lift some of this away with our knife. I do love the way this black does go in over the top really smoothly and nicely. As I mentioned before, there's a few little colours, pencils in this range that I'm going to be combining in with my polychromos, especially today as I've discovered one of my favourite <laughs> polychromos. They did they, for paper because they don't do a huge range of the browns anyway, but I discovered from Fabric Star yesterday that one of the main ones I do use has been discontinued and I'm still waiting to hear back from them to see if there's going to be a replacement to see whether every now and again they rename a colour so it comes back but just under another name. I think like um, Earth Green was originally called Greyish Green so anyone who's got a really old set it's called Greyish Green and it does lead to some confusion same as orange glaze or one of the oranges, might be a cadmium orange or something, was called tangerine. Um, so sometimes when you get pencil lists 
uh, for projects. If it's a pencil artist that's been around for quite a while, um, they'll quote you the old name. So it's always good to check the number. Always check your numbers. Right, so I need a nice reddish orange in here now. I'm just going through. See the, the ends of these colours as well. This is the thing, right? That's the end of the Persian orange. That's the other end. See how dark that is. But on our sheet, it does come out a nice deepish red. So I'm going to go in with the Persian orange and hope. Sort of, it might need to go. Yeah, I'm going to need to take that still darker. So let me just try each of these in here. Nope, that's too light. So again, I've got a feeling. Let's get the reddish one in there. That's a ruby, ruby earth. Oh, I almost remembered the name. It's a little bit too red. But I'm going to mix it with a touch of the chocolate. What I want to do today with this little stint is get this section done and I might pull it up a bit further and get the top all above the eyes in place and then come in um, then come in and use the knife and that way we'll have a really good idea then of how it's all looking that still needs to go darker up here Texturise it, we'll texturise it and see how it comes out. And then we need to start blending this orangey colours into our brown ochre soon. So we're still colouring in. <laughs> and all we're doing really literally is just building the pigment um, over this whole area so we've got enough down to start using the knife. And then we can just start to repeat that process exactly like we did on the main. You notice I haven't got any of these little dark lines down in there yet either. And that's what I'm going to say. We'll lift off with a knife and then come in with pencils over the top to get those dark lines in. Now I need some of the Van Dyke Brown in here again. Really keep an eye on fur length directions up here. You've got directional fur here and then it curls up. Um, here it's literally just tiny little stubby strokes.
So this Van Dyke brown is not quite dark enough. The Mars black is a little bit too dark. So I'm sort of glazing one over the top of the other. And one will soften the other back. I need some of that light bronze up around there as well. But I'm going to come in first of all again with our brown ochre up here. Don't worry about that coming down here. We'll flick that in over the top. See how quickly now we've managed to saturate that area up here and how fast the depth has begun to build there. Okay, so let me just come in with light up there yeah I need to get some light up there but let me just come in with that light bronze this is still going down over the top now this is the bit where I was hoping to have used the um the dark backing because when we did our knife cuts it would be the dark little little dark flicky lines that would be showing through the texture lines but now that we're using more of a yellow yellowy orange base underneath those are going to be more of the lines that we're going to be pulling forwards so it does change our approach so again, I might even, like I mentioned earlier, I might even resort to putting some dark down on the face um, behind. On the pasta mat itself. But we shall see. Just continue to mix and blend. I have to have to get the knife out in a second or start to move. I'm going to move. I reference that up first of all and carry on working down so I'm going to get the whole of the brow done I don't want to get half of it done I then have to come back in and go oh, which pencils did I use there and then try and get it all to match up I'd much rather do this all in one go okay so let's pull my reference up a tiny bit Sort of a brow line coming out here. Okay, 
so I'm going to come in now with the champagne. Just going to start to see if there's any areas there where I can get a little bit of catchment. Tiny little amount. Doesn't matter because I say we're going to come in with a knife next. Just get a little bit down, a little bit to pick up. That would be really great. Lots of highlight up through here, so I'm going to put it down before I go in with any of the mid-tone colours. I must apologise, but there is a really annoying blue bottle somewhere in this room. If I open the window, we've got builders next to that one, um, so we'll get the noise of that. So, at the moment, I'm having to tolerate just hearing that annoying fly buzzing around in here so I apologise if you can hear it and it's bugging you too hopefully it's not sounding so bad right so I know we've got a yellow yoke let's have a look how a yellow with yellow, yellow yoke is going to come up I'm aware now that this is pretty much the colour of the backing paper so I'm not sure how much I need to re put this down because it's just going to intensify with the, um, the colour of the backing paper. Let's just see. I might have a little flex of it in through there. Back to our brown ochre. Oh, this is going to go a little bit darker. 
and we want it to now. What I am going to do is just come in with those black really lightly. Just put in a few hints, some texture lines, almost just like little dabs, little stipples. I want these to be showing up. paper was bouncing a little bit there. That's one thing you'll find is that curve. I was saying about where it's come off the roll, it just wants to bounce. Just pinned it down again, it's bouncing up here though. It's almost like it needs stretching. Just popping in, like I say, more texture lines all up through there. So when I come in over the top with my ochres, it'll still show up underneath and then let's say we'll cut through them all with a knife. Eyes are still constantly flicking backwards and forwards. Just enhancing that centre line now. Here's little tiny darker marks. I'm now happy to take those darker because everything around him is up to the right tonal value now. So this should be up about here.
quiet because I'm concentrating, but I'm letting it run, the video to carry on running real time. So you can literally just watch my pencil, you can see what I'm doing. I might speed up when we come down to do the lower part of the face a tiny bit because it's just repeating what the process that I'm doing here. Okay, so let's put in little tiny two extra lines. So we'll glaze over now with our colours up in that area. But they'll sit underneath. Um, so this is the brown ochre. Mars black lines now and so they'll sit underneath what we've put down. look nice. Yellow ochre. Oh, I need some of that light bronze as well. Let's get the yellow light bronze in first. Give them that lovely heavy brow of um, 
But life. <laughs> Need some more red over there. I'm going to come in with that um, ruby earth. Now I'll glaze over the top of that with some of one of the ochre oranges. I'm rotating through with my chocolate, the Mars black. Just texturizing up this area. So we'll do this again after the knife work. So for those of you that have used smooth papers, I guess you'll have a good comparison as to so it's quicker, slower, you know, how it compares to your normal method of working. Any trouble is with me, <laughs> the smaller I go, I still want to try and get in as many details as possible. I'll be trying to squeeze in as many details on here as I do on a 12 by 16 piece. Nothing wrong with that, it just means it'll take you longer. Results will be worth that. But, oh, it can take up a lot of time. Time that you don't need to take, it's just a personal choice that you want to push it a little bit further, and that's the difference. And people out there say, oh no, you, you know, you don't need to do as many layers, you don't need to do this, you don't need to do that, you get the same results. You don't. 
don't actually get the same results. When you see stuff on social media, on a little screen, it's not the same as seeing a piece in real life. And when your eye, you get more of an eye for pencil work or art in general, you'll start to see it yourself. It's all about personal choice and how far you want to take it. Glazing this yellow ochre over the whole area now just to make sure we've not missed any pigment off and if we have this is gonna go down in its place. I'll just mix and blend. All of that pigment that we've got down into place as well. You should be able to see that even though there's light reflecting. Aim my light away. Less of a reflection. There is a reflection there still. Okay, you should be able to see that a lot better there now. Of how much we... I was going to say the word densified. I don't think that's the word again. So the next stage again. We'll come in with our knife. Um, start to add texture. I'm going to bring my light back in again. And it's a little bit reflective for you guys, but I need it in place. So, move one of my little... Um, I have to spin this again, I think. Let me just see how I can get on. Let me just see. Because I need to be... No, it's kind of working. Let me just see how much I can texturise. over here. Not very well at that angle. Rising through. I think what I'm going to need to do is go in on the reverse with 
I think some white because the white is going to show through better where it has done down here. It still shows through nice and soft. But it's showing through much better than um, just putting the wheat or the champagne down. nicely just said it needs something lighter behind there now and we can see where we're taking this out we can sharpen up our um, our light pencils anyway and see if we can sneak those into the channels of these little grooves and taking out with the knife. I really like how that's that has texturized up really nicely. Um, just if I can lift this off a second to show you. Okay. Hopefully you can just see how much furry texture that's created there now. Um, I'm going to just move across and do the other side. Let me see if I can pin this down in place there and then I can zoom the camera in even a little bit further for you just so you can see me work in that area there we go that's better I just need to move my reference photo down again now get that lined up so it's kind of in the same place right line it up for myself with the reference um, and the camera there we go okay so up here I'm definitely going to need to put down some light behind this for these flicks to show up better 